Earth is constantly bombarded by particles from the sun. When sunspots or a solar flare send enough of these particles toward the Earth's magnetic field, the skies at both poles light up with the aurora borealis and the aurora australis. The particles also create very low-frequency electromagnetic waves, creating a type of natural radio. It can be picked up around the globe with specially designed receivers. So every year around this time, sound recordist Steve McGreevy heads north where the reception is best and points his receiver at the sky. There's just a whole litany of different natural radio sounds to record. Hisslers and growlers and howlers and tweaks. These clusters like a pack of dogs barking. And uh, in the case of this morning, we're having these very soft, hissy whistlers, which are actually fairly rare. It's uh, 5.24 in the morning on Monday, the 22nd of June, 1998, at Waterton Park, uh, Belly River Campground, Southern Alberta, Canada. And we've got these great hissy whistlers happening, and uh, in the right channel we're hearing the beginnings of chorus. That was a burst of static from something pretty close, a lightning storm. Oftentimes when I'm recording, you'll hear kind of a <laughs> and maybe a second or two later you'll hear a <laughs> The electromagnetic pulse from the lightning bolt takes a round trip to the opposite hemisphere and then it bounces back. And in making this long trip, the frequency components are spread out. So you get this downward falling tone, like a sigh or a hiss. These receivers are sensitive enough that a lightning storm could be happening um, a thousand miles away and the static would still be strong. You can just hear all the snapping. Let me turn on this uh, speaker amplifier. You just can imagine there is so much. Oh, in fact, we're hearing some nice noises now coming in. Uh... Okay, this, this is a, a very beautiful sounding event. This is called Chorus. Particles from the sun are hitting Earth's magnetic field and generating these noises, probably several thousand miles out in space. Imagine a soap bubble with wind currents pushing against it. You can see it deform. Well, that's essentially what happens with Earth's magnetic field. So yeah, I've got these uh, funky looking triangular shaped loops. Five turns of about 350 feet of wire hanging up on the tree, uh, picking up the uh, beautiful sounds of Mother Earth. They're just vibrations of electrical and magnetic energy. And so essentially all these receivers do is pick up the Earth's radio waves and translate them directly to the same sound frequencies. And so the result is just beautiful and amazing. And it's been going on, well, for eons. And we first noticed it in England. In about 1882, the British telegraph operators started hearing these strange whistling tones in their headphones. But it wasn't until the uh, 1930s when some people started associating these with visible northern lights. As electronic equipment became more available to the average experimenter and hobbyist, amateurs started listening to this using fairly crude equipment, you know, maybe a phonograph amplifier connected to a barbed wire fence in the middle of nowhere, and similar to what I did when I first heard this myself. When I discovered Earth makes its own radio waves, I was amazed because I'm a nature enthusiast anyway, you know, always been interested in astronomy and science.
I've got a long, quite checkered history with radio, beginning as a little kid playing with an AM pocket radio and tuning in distant stations at night, and I've done all sorts of crazy things, planting radio beacons in the middle of the deserts and bouncing signals off aircraft. <laughs> and, uh... There's a station in Colorado called WWV, which does nothing but transmit the time 24 hours a day on shortwave. All the threshold indices for 21 June follow. Solar flux 102 and bold A index 16. Repeat solar flux. But once an hour, WWV gives, uh, lets me know what's going on with the Earth's magnetic field, and they give what they call space weather, which is uh, what's going on in the sun and between the sun and the Earth. Solar activity was low. The geomagnetic field was quiet to minor storm. The forecast so, for the next 24 hours. I'm aware that right now the Earth is in a magnetic storm, and it may be affecting power lines right now. It may be affecting satellites right now. Space weather, this, this invisible weather we can't really see or feel on Earth, but indeed it's going on out there. And it's wild, and it's stormy at times, and it's calm at other times. It's just like weather here on Earth. Well, at this very moment I've got my headphones on. These whistlers are really coming in big streams now. There's just one whistler kind of merging into the other, all slowly descending in pitch. Oh, these are so great. Wow. Steve McGreevy in Canada's Waterton Peace Park 